going to tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, I grew up in London, Ontario. My mother was an artist who had been uh, offered a master's to come to Toronto. But it was uh, after the Depression. She was very young. Her parents wouldn't let her come, so uh, she became a draftsman. Anyways, I studied art all through uh, high school, and I wanted to go to art school. And my mom was like, no, you're not. You're going to get a job, you know. So I uh, went to Ryerson and studied interior design. Uh, great program, very creative. I was fortunate enough that there was an emphasis on painting and drawing and photography and lino block and carpentry. So it was a very well-rounded. Well and, uh, and then when I graduated, I then worked as a professional designer. And I was fortunate enough to work with some of the top design firms in Toronto and in Canada, for that matter. Um, in 2006, uh, a few things happened. My father passed away. Then my partner and I moved to Vancouver. I decided to take some time off. I had this inheritance. And I went to Emily Carr, which is probably one of the best art colleges in Canada. And really great program. And they were like, so here I've been, you know, I've been practicing design for like over 20 years, doing things creatively, and they made me re-look at things. So it was just very eye-opening. And uh, I was uh, working on my master's in fine art, and the professors kind of pulled me aside and said, what the hell are you doing here? And I said, oh, well, I thought I'd get my master's in, in art, you know. Are you planning to teach? And I went, no. Get out of here. <laughs> You know, go work on your medium, you know, create a body of work. So uh, it was a great, great piece of advice. Um, at that time, my relationship ended. So I kind of went through those three stresses that people go through in their life. You know, there's death, moving, and the breakup of a relationship. So, and then I ended up back in Toronto the fall of 2008, just in time for the economy to crash. I think we all remember Bernie Madoff and all that. Uh, so although I was practicing as a designer, I also had a lot of time to uh, hone my craft as an artist. And in Vancouver, I had been working in, primarily in encaustic. But it wasn't giving me the sense of depth that I was trying to, trying to create. And I don't know if it's because, you know, I think think about things three-dimensionally all, all day long. Um, so I tried, I tried continuing to do that, that line of work that I had been practicing in Vancouver, and it just wasn't working. So on a total Streisand moment, but I didn't cut my hair off, I pushed everything you know, away in the studio and, and started looking at things differently. And then I discovered resin, which is this highly lacquered finish that they use on boats, and I went, oh, wow, and it's, it's like a magnifying glass, so I, I now need to like do my paintings backwards. So if I want something to really come through, it's got to be the first thing to, to go down in the back, and then, and then as I scratch away at the surface, it'll, it'll come through. So that kind of brings that, you know, then it's kind of, you know, what inspires me? Um, well, that's a really tough question, and I didn't, all of us were kind of having a, a hard time uh, talking about that. But I guess because I had all this uh, emotional shit and baggage that I was trying to process, um, a lot of that came through in my work. And, uh, and my work has, over the years, it started off, as many of my friends know, very dark. And that was kind of lightened a bit. Um, there's still moodiness in it. There will always be moodiness. Um, <laughs> so on one respect, I'm a designer. So I know all about you know, interior spaces and how an art can help and proper curation. Um, but then there's also the thing about interior design is you're dealing with clients, and you're dealing with budgets, and you're dealing with you know, product that is out of stock, and this happens and that happens. So when I paint. It really is the one true time when I get to escape all that. 
And it's kind of like finding that moment of stillness. Um, turn off the iPhone and just kind of really just do something that's totally contemplative. So that's what really, you know, kind of gets me going. Um, a lot of people have said my work kind of looks, you know, is it a landscape, or are we looking at water, or is it clouds? And it's kind of all of that. I mean, I, I'm, you know, nature is all around us. So the nature does inspire me, but I'm not doing anything literal or figurative. So it's kind of like I'd rather ask, ask you, well, what, what do you feel when you look at my piece? A lot of practice. <laughs> a lot of practice. I mean, I, I discovered fa I work on panel because when you work on canvas and then you suddenly do this technique, it becomes this magnifying glass, so the whole texture of the canvas comes through. I also work very physically, so I'm working hard on the wood panel and then I'm scraping it and then I sand it with like industrial sanders and I do all sorts of, of things to it. So. No, no, that was actually the last. That was the very, very last. Whereas the first, first things are like, you know, the vivid little colors at the corners. My friend Suzanne here said to me, how do, you, how do you start with a blank canvas in front of you? And I said, well, you can't. So that's why I always throw something down on the panel. And then, and then I walk away, and then I come back to it. So then you don't feel as intimidated that you're, you know. That's, that's my, my way of doing it. I think that's kind of pretty much all I need to say. Thanks. You know? Thanks. Thank you.